One of the greatest portraits of God in the Bible is found in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. This Psalm describes the nature of God as our shepherd. It describes God's relationship to us, the way that a shepherd cares for the sheep. And it describes our relationship to God, the way that a sheep follows the shepherd, trusts the shepherd, depends upon the shepherd. We come today to this portion where the psalmist writes of the Lord, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What is the rod and the staff that the shepherd carries with him? Now, we've all seen images of the shepherd with a staff in his hand. And it's a long pole. It has a crook on the top of it, a small hook that you could grab something or retrieve a sheep if it was caught in the thicket. There's also a rod that he carries on his belt. What is all of that about, the rod and the staff? And he says, they're sources of comfort. They're sources of help. They're reassurance. Well, it's all about the shepherd's rod. It's a source of protection for the sheep, this rod that he carries with him and often carries on his belt. He uses it to protect the sheep against an animal of prey. David tells how he slew a lion and a bear when he protected his sheep. And he probably used the rod to do that. The shepherd's rod was a hard, heavy club about three feet long. It is an extension of the shepherd's own right arm, a symbol of his strength and power, unless, of course, the shepherds were left-handed. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, the right hand of God is associated with his power and protection. In fact, the first song ever recorded in the Bible was written by Moses and sung after the parting of the Red Sea and the Israelites got across safe. And in that Beautiful song found in Exodus 15, verse 6. He says, your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has crushed the enemy. David makes the same allusion to God, his strong right arm. Many times in the Old Testament, God describes his right arm that reaches into the world to save and to redeem. So the shepherd's rod is basically a weapon for some settings. When he holds it, it becomes an extension of his strength and power to protect the sheep. The sheep by himself is totally defenseless against the predator. Yet in the shepherd's presence, the sheep feels very comfortable. He finds comfort because he knows the shepherd will protect him. What a great Assurance for us to know that whatever we face in life and walking through this valley of shadow, he describes that facing the enemies of life and the challenges that God will protect us. Now, the staff he carries is also a symbol in Scripture of the authority of God in the hands of his people. Moses stretched forth his shepherd's staff over Egypt. When the Nile turned into blood and the gnats came upon the land and the frogs came and the ten plagues when he parted the Red Sea, he stretched out the rod. Moses himself was a shepherd for 40 years in the desert before the Lord led him back to Egypt to set the people to go. And that's one of the reasons that he was able to bring them out and, and to take care of them for 40 years in the desert because Moses had the mentality of a shepherd. He knew how to be patient with sheep, to watch over them and to lead them and guide them. And Moses himself didn't carry a sword and a spear and a shield when he stood before Pharaoh, but he went in the armor that he knew. He went with the tools that he used, a rod and a staff. And that staff, though, in the hand of Moses became a symbol of God's authority at work in his life. And the rod then for us in a spiritual way would represent the word of God, the sword of the spirit, a defensive weapon against fear, against temptation, against deception. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We find comfort, we find peace, we find reassurance knowing that God will protect us and keep us safe. Now, it was also used to discipline and correct a wayward, rebellious sheep, the staff in the hand of the shepherd, so that the rebellious sheep doesn't go his own way. And there are sheep that become totally rebellious. You just cannot control them. Most sheep are compliant. Many are rebellious. And so the staff in the hand of the shepherd is not only 
for protection. It is also there to discipline and to correct and to direct the sheep, even a rebellious sheep, which is a great comfort to know that even when we're rebellious, God's not going to give up on us. He's going to use his staff to direct us and get us back on course. And of course, David experienced this in his own life many times. The classic story of his affair with Bathsheba and got off track and fell from grace. And yet God didn't discard him. God didn't remove him from the throne. God sent the prophet to him, the word of God, and it convicted him of his sin. And David repented and found new joy and got back on track. And God used the prophetic word as a staff to correct David and to redeem him and to restore him. And so even when we are rebellious and go our own way, God doesn't give up on us. He uses the staff of his word to correct us, to guide us, to get us back on track. He may use the staff of circumstances and adversity to get us back on track. That happened in the life of the prodigal son who took all of his inheritance and wasted it, went on a party spree, lived a luxurious life and wasted all his money on all these people in his entourage until he ran out of money and couldn't find any work. A young man who was entitled and rich and living the party lifestyle, and when he all the money ran out, all the friends left him. He found himself working on a farm, a pig farm, in the mud. Finally, he realized that he needed help. and It was the discipline of the adversity, the discipline of running out of money, the discipline of having to work with pigs in the mud. And that hard life, and he had to just eat some of the husks that were left over. It was the adversity that became a staff in the hand of the Lord. And that story Jesus told to make the prodigal son come to his own senses. That's what Jesus said in that beautiful parable in Luke's gospel. When he came to his own senses, it was the adversity, it was the problems, it run out of money. Life got hard. That's what gave him a wake-up call. And the word of God may be the staff that gets us back on track, a prophetic word like Nathan brought to David that convicts us of our sin, of our error and our rebellion, so we repent and we get back on track. It may be the adversities of life, and we're going through hard times, and we realize we're going the wrong way, but it becomes a way of disciplining us and correcting us. The shepherd's rod is referred to as, quote, passing under the rod in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 37. Now, the shepherd makes a careful examination of every sheep to ensure their greatest care. So they just kind of pass under the rod. He may just brush them, see if there's anything caught in their wool. And God uses his word to examine us. Self-examination is so important in life. And the Holy Spirit searches us. We can examine ourselves. Plato said the unexamined life is not worth living. David understood this spiritually in Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24, when he prayed, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. He knew that he needed at times to pass under the rod, to look at the word of God like a mirror into our lives, to be examined by the Scripture. Hebrews 4 and 12 says that the word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword like a surgeon's scalpel. It divides soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Every time I read the scripture, it examines me. I see my life in light of scripture. I see my character in light of truth, as you do. And it's good to pass under the rod, to be examined, We go for health exams. Wise people will go for a physical every year. Sometimes they'll get an x-ray, an extra test. You need an examination to kind of know where you are in life. In the word of God, the scripture, it's the shepherd's rod to examine us. The staff in the hand of the shepherd was about eight feet long. It had a crook on the end, just a hook. Now, the shepherd will use the staff to pick up a newborn lamb and bring it to its mother. So it can be used for carrying a newborn lamb. Now, this way, the lamb will not be rejected by the mother by smelling the scent of the shepherd on the lamb. In the same way, the Spirit of God works to bring us into fellowship with God 
And he brings us into fellowship with each other in the church. In Ephesians 4 and 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. So in a newborn lamb, the shepherd will use that staff to pick the lamb up and take it to his mother. So the mother always identifies the lamb as belonging to her. So in that sense, the shepherd is always including the sheep into the fold. The staff is also used to guide the sheep through dangerous areas by gentle prodding. The shepherd may take the staff and push it up against the side of the sheep and kind of direct them like guardrails do on a road for us in case we veer off course. There's a guardrail there. Well, the shepherd would use that staff at times just to hold it out like a guardrail to direct the sheep, the lead sheep, and the rest of them are following along. Sometimes the shepherd will hold the staff next to the side of his sheep just to remind them that the shepherd is there, just a gentle touch that the shepherd is still there, that they haven't been left or abandoned. The staff is used to lift a sheep out of a dangerous area if it slipped on a treacherous slope. So the rod and the staff are very important in protecting the sheep and guiding the sheep. This staff reminds me also of the role of parents to guide their children. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way that he or she should go, and when they are old, they'll not depart from it. I had a friend of mine recently, and their daughter's out of school and has gotten into a relationship that they don't think is the best for her. He said to me one day, where did we go wrong? I said, you didn't go wrong at all. The story's not over. We raise our children. We teach them. We guide them. They have to make their own decisions. They're all like sheep. We all make our own decisions. But what we teach our children becomes like a staff to direct them, to guide them. That's why it says when they're old, they'll not depart from it. When we teach our kids the right thing, the right values, the right ethics, biblical truth, it will guide them through their life. We all get off course every now and again. But the Word of God in us is like a staff to direct us, to get us back on track. It's like a guardrail that keeps us from going, drifting too far. I had a parent asked me recently, they sent me a note about parenting. And they referred to all these passages about the rod and the staff, and they read Proverbs about discipline of children. It used this analogy of a rod, but it doesn't mean an instrument of, of striking someone. The, the shepherd doesn't take the staff and strike the sheep. The staff is there to direct the sheep. It's not there to punish the sheep in that sense. And that's what the rod means in Proverbs when it talks about the rod as an analogy in parenting and correcting for the moral development of a child. It doesn't mean punishment in a harsh way. We all need to be punished every now and again. We need to feel the consequences of our misbehavior, but it certainly doesn't mean that in a physical sense. It's an analogy to the shepherd's rod and to the shepherd's staff to lead and guide our children. And when they are dishonest and they disobey and they're disrespectful, then they need the shepherd's rod. They need the staff. They need correction, guidance, and training. But the discipline of a child is not about punishment. The word discipline means to educate and to train and to prepare for life. When you think about self-discipline, you don't think about punishing yourself. You think about controlling yourself, teaching yourself, forming good habits. And that's what it means to discipline children. Punishment's a very small part of life. And we all get punished mostly by the natural consequences of our behavior. And just like a shepherd with a rod and a staff to protect and to guide and to put up the guardrail every now and again and to, to put the standard and say to our kids, no, that you can't go any further. You got to stay on track. It's a great analogy also to providing discipline and structure. If you find yourself in an executive position or a leadership position or a teaching position in the church or the school, you find yourself in a mentoring relationship or a coaching relationship. You can learn from the shepherd the power of the staff to set boundaries and discipline and hold the people you're teaching and training to standards. 
Some schools have dropped standards. Well, it's like a staff. It's a guardrail. Our kids need standards. We all need them. It keeps us on track. It keeps us focused. So even in your leadership role in the church, in your home, in the business where you work, perhaps in politics or the school where you teach, you can see yourself as a shepherd with a staff. The staff is biblical truth. That staff is what's morally right. That staff is what is ethically true. And you can use those standards to help the people you coach and teach and lead to stay on track as well. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What an assurance to know today that the Lord is always with us. He will protect us from danger. He used the staff to reach out and rescue us if we get into danger and save us. He'll use that staff to teach us and guide us and correct us and keep us on course. Join me for prayer. Thank you, Father, for the revelation of yourself in this beautiful psalm, the 23rd Psalm. I pray today that the instruction of the Word might prepare us for life. Help us to find an assurance in you that you're always with us. Your rod and your staff comfort us. Help those of us in positions of leadership and influence to understand how to use the staff and the rod to guide and to coach and to lead people in paths of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for being with me today. We're enjoying the study together of the Word of God. Invite others to share in the Dig Deep Bible study every week, 15 minutes to change your life. Let me ask you to go today and download the Mount Perrin app in your smartphone so we can stay connected. You can also benefit from all the ministries of Mount Perrin. You can learn how you can become involved in the church and also how you can support the church through your giving and become a prayer partner with us in ministry. No matter where you are in the world, you can join the church. If you have a commitment to Mount Perrin, you don't have a church where you are perhaps, We'd love to have you as a part of the Mount Perrin family. You can learn all about that on the Mount Perrin website and also on your Mount Perrin app as well. I'm praying for you. I'm believing God's best for you. Thank you for being with me today. I look forward to continuing this study with you. In our next lesson, the Lord is my shepherd. God bless you. Have a great day.